on Lorna's programme. We have our pay-per-view. We look at some of the stories that people are talking about this morning. And I'm delighted to say this morning, our pay-per-view, to look at some stories, is the brilliant Alison Inslee. Very good morning to you, Alison. Morning, Richard. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Now, Alison, you are a very, very, very busy person because not only are you a squash coach, you're a keen cyclist, you work in a library, and you're also an on-call firefighter. When do you sleep, Alison? Somewhere in between there. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is my secret. <laughs> Listen, I need something of what you're having because you're doing all that. Now, we're starting with a topic which is very close to your heart, obviously being a squash coach, and UK yeah. Coaching Week. That's right, yeah. UK Coaching Week starts uh, next week, so they, they run an event uh, a week every every year just to celebrate uh, coaches. Um, so, yeah, UK Coaching Week starts on the 14th. Um, and obviously the, the, the idea behind the UK, UK Coaching Week is, is, is an opportunity to celebrate existing coaches, encourage and inspire new coaches to come on board and also to share wonderful stories from coaching. And, and, and to me, a wonderful story isn't necessarily, oh, I coach these kids and they've become world champions, Olymp- Olympians, etc. Because coaching in any sport is, is more than just, just winning. It's, you know, the various aspects of their life with respect to discipline team working, communicating, supporting each other, you know, lots of really important life skills that they get from coaching. So it's very sad for me and uh, with the other coaches as well that it, it, most of coaching has stopped since March. So um, I was going to I'm, ask I'm you about that. Yeah. So talk us through, like, obviously, have you got an idea of when you might be able to get back on the courts and do some squash coaching, Alison? Yeah, so we are, we are kind of allowed now, okay. um, but it's kind of making sure that all our facilities are COVID secure um, our, our juniors, especially with younger ch- children, you know that they're kind of a little bit more tactile and and don't understand some of the dangers that us, uh, adults probably do see and understand. So it's making sure that everything's safe. And the place I will be coaching, you know, they've put sanitizers in place, they've got antiseptic wipes in place, they've got a one-way system. You know, it's all it's all sorted. Um, it's just getting getting back into it now, and just giving people the confidence to. To, to come back because I think that's that's where a lot of it is because especially with me being a squash coach squash is obviously an indoor sport um, and also you're in a box you know, you're in a contained box it's not like you're outdoors you're not, it's not like playing football or rugby you've got mm. the outdoors it's not like tennis your opponent's on the other side yes. of the, the, the court you're actually in the same space you know so as a coach you've got you know and I used to have maybe possibly four to eight kids on a, on a, on a court with, with with a coach and um, you know we can't do that anymore maximum we're allowed on court at the moment is two that are not related so if, if it was a family of four we could obviously have put them on court together but, but you're only allowed two young people plus a coach and then they try to encourage coaches to coach from the balcony you know stay off, off court as, mm-hmm. as much as possible so a lot of coaches I, I know squash coaching has, has already started in a COVID secure way I, I'm planning to start next weekend Um so, so yeah, that's that's the plan. I mean, I'm not going to be running it like I used to. I, I've got a team of six volunteer coaches. We we work together as, as as a team, and we've got 20 plus children. Um, so it's not going to be like that. It's just going to be me going on call with a couple of a couple of children that are that are related at the moment. So we're going to start really, really slowly, and then hopefully after October half term, I'm going to um, try and work with Kenworth Squash Club, which is just around the corner from me, and reintroduce my my coaching but again it has to only be two on a court so it's yeah it's quite limited which is very sad for me sad for everyone you know because but the, the, the children like being with each other you know i get them all on court at the beginning get them all on court at the end so and it's great for them because you know you've got children as young as five up to kids that are up to 16 17 and it's kind of understanding and respecting each other um you know boys girls uh, of various ages so it's um it's a lovely environment that we've created with our coaching and it's it's, it's it's, um, We're still going to create a nice environment, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different. And I, uh, you say there about coaching and, and coaches. I'll, I'll share a little secret with you, Alison. Uh, coming up yeah. after eight o'clock today, I've got my old school coach coming onto the TV, onto the oh, program, fantastic. because he coached Ian Bell. He's obviously ret- announced his retirement, but he's also my old school teacher, Mr. Price, Grill really? Price. And what you said about having a positive impact on your life, even though yeah. you know you might not make a pinnacle of being an elite sportsman, those people, you know, setting life standards and, and sort of gives you a pathway, doesn't it? I, I remember going down to a boxing club down in Willenall a couple of years ago and there was a lad there who had sort of fallen out of school, wasn't really getting on very well, taken up boxing. He got was basically pulled himself right back on track. He was doing his MVQ. He was doing his diary with his trainer. Completely changed his life around through sport. Absolutely brilliant. Now, the next story I want to talk about is the 999 Challenge. What's this? Yeah. Okay, so... Um 
Obviously, uh, COVID and um, it seems to be COVID seems to be the topic in every subject we ever talk about these days. But um, unfortunately, that is the way we, where, where we're at. But um, obviously, over the um, over the summer, uh, sporting facilities were shut, the gym was closed, etc. And um, the idea between from the 999 challenge, because I work for the uh, Watch Fire and Rescue Service, is that we were trying to keep people moving over the summer holidays, which obviously ended up being extended summer holidays. So I came with the 999 challenge, and uh, this was launched by our chief fire officer at Warwickshire Fire and Rescue uh, on the 9th of July, and it finished on the 9th of September, and it ran for nine weeks. So there's lots of nines in there for, for obvious reasons. And the idea was to complete one of the nine challenges that I'd come up with. So, for instance, there was um, you could learn nine new facts, uh, deliver nine acts of kindness, deliver nine items to your local charity bank, or go physical, you know, run, walk, cycle, row, nine kilometres, nine miles, etc. So the idea was there's lots of nines in there. And then, and then, and then um, you would also then nominate nine other people to take part and also donate 9.99 to the firefighters' charity, which the firefighters' charity looks after the mental and, and uh, physical well-being of all firefighters in the UK. So, but the idea was, as I said, to keep people moving over the summer, give them a challenge. Um, and it was it, there, there were things in there that young people could do as opposed to older people as well. So it was a challenge set for anyone and everyone across the country. So we've raised uh, actually £1,111 so far. So, um, so you, need, it's, it's you know gone, what you need well. to raise? You need to raise £9,999. That's what you need to get to, Alison. Then you've done it. That was my target. <laughs> my target says 9999.99. So that's kind of where I was at. It didn't yeah, quite yeah. achieve. And I think the problem was there was lots of challenges going on over the summer. Yes, but listen, it's a fantastic uh, you know, achievement. But, but fantastic but achievement. Still happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I should be. Listen, stay there, Alison. We've got a couple of other stories we're going to talk about. We're going to talk cycling, Brilliant. libraries, and also back to university. We'll be talking about Excellent. that after a bit of... Saturday... Is Alison Inslee. Alison is a squash coach. She's also an on-call firefighter and a keen cyclist. And that's where we're going next, Alison. The story about Cycle September, Coventry being a Hello. cycle city. Hello again, Richard. Uh, yeah, so Cycle September obviously started on the 1st of September and it runs for the whole of the month. And the idea of Cycle September is to encourage people to cycle, get onto two wheels, and basically cycle to anywhere, any any time and with anyone but obviously right now it's uh, no more than six people within your cycling group um but uh, you know over covid there was a rocket in sale of new and secondhand bikes and people starting to enjoy the cycling the benefits of cycling but not, i i cycled i've been cycling for like 20 years so me trying to get my bike in for a service was a struggle and i was like how can you so busy so so many people are buying bikes which is which is fantastic absolutely brilliant you know so it's it's kind of once you purchase your bike it's more or less free exercise you know and my sister right, bought babe. one. My sister bought yeah. a bike during lockdown. Um, yeah. She's had a few cycles on it, but it's been in the garage for a couple of weeks. The, the, the danger is, isn't it, as you go back to normal life, it's, yep. you don't want it to be sort of, you know, the, the bread maker that you took away in the bottom cupboard in the kitchen like, almost. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of that, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, there, is, there is a worry of that. But, you know, with um, I, th- I think people's lifestyles have changed and they probably will change permanently. Um, you know, people not necessarily going back into offices and et cetera. So, Hopefully they'll have the, the time they save on commute to that hour and a half in the morning, hour and a half in the evening. Think, well, actually, I'll start work at eight. I'll finish at four. And actually, I'll take the kids out cycling in the evening or I'll cycle the kids to school. I'll come home, do some work. I'll cycle back to school, pick the children up. So, you know, lifestyles can permanently change for the better, in my opinion. Uh, and obviously, it will ease traffic congestion for those that, that need to need to be in a, in a vehicle. That You save money. You save a lot of money um, on, on fuel and um, expenses related to vehicles. Uh, and then you enjoy the mental and health, the mental and the physical benefits of exercise, which to me is is the best thing. You know, I cycle to work every morning, and that headspace I get for my 22 minutes of my five mile bike ride is immense. You know, I don't think I can get that any other way. And then you know, I finish the day at work, come home, and I, I've released all the tension I've got for the day. Come home, and I'm I'm back to back to being human again, back to being Alison again instead of this stressed person. So I remember reading a story about. Brilliant. I remember reading a story about a guy who was working from home during lockdown, but what he would do is he would go to a bike ride and then come back to his desk. And then at the end of when he finished it, he'd go and do a bike ride and come back to his house to break up that day that he felt like he'd had that, you know, that defined period, even though he's working from home, that he, he was at work. And that's Absolutely. the kind of thing, isn't it? Let's uh, quickly go to the story about libraries, because this is something very, very close to your heart and something you're very, very passionate about. Yeah, so I've worked for the library service for coming on to 18 years in January, and um, I'm not frontline. I'm, I'm I'm back office. I, I deal with all the performance, the data management, consultation, customers, etc. 
but obviously I support our frontline um, staff. So Watch Your Libraries has many other services closed at the end of March this year because um, obviously it's um, it's a very hands-on sort of environment. Um, but then as services started to stand up a little bit, we, we started a click and collect service. So basically just like you do with Amazon, you go online, you go on our catalogue, you choose what you want, uh, the staff will pick it for you and they'll tell you where to pick it up from which which library uh, establishment um, and what time. So it's a click and collect service, which we started up in three libraries and we extended it now. All but one of our libraries, so 17 of our 18 libraries are now click and collect. And also we opened up our computers to, to, to be used. So that was limited to 45 minutes rather than the full hour. And then they were cleaned in between before the next customer came along. So all, all that happened at the beginning of July. And now what we're planning to do is by the end of September... Um, which is only a couple of weeks away. Before the end of September, we will be trying to open as many library outlets as possible for browsing. So that means customers think, will be allowed in. I always think with libraries, they're one of those things that until you lose it, you won't know what yeah. you've lost until it's gone, Absolutely. as they say. Yeah, now, yeah. quickly, let's just start. It's a busy day for you today because obviously universities, lots going back today, and that's got particular resonance with you today as a family, Alison. Yeah, we're taking our, our lad back to university in about an hour. Um, so he's been at Nottingham now. So this is his... We're in a slightly different position to some of the some of the parents and children. This is my son's seventh year at university, so it's not his first year. You know, there's no seventh. freshers. There's seventh year, so he's is he doing um, medicine. He is doing chemistry. Ah. So he did a he did a four years masters. He got a first class honors degree, and then he was um, uh, put through into a PhD. So he's mm. now just completed his second year. So he's got another year and a half to two years to go. So um, so he's been in a very strange environment. All the offices have been closed. He's only been allowed in the in the lab. Um, but from not this week coming, but the week after, they're, they're allowing undergraduates to come back, so they're opening up all the offices, etc. So even for him, being in a, a space it, since March, uh, um, where there's been no one else except them, it's going to be quite strange seeing the students come back. Alison, have you got any reservations about it? How are you feeling emotionally about this today, about your son going back? With the I hate him going back. You can go. Because <laughs> 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 <Like, laughs> obviously March was COVID, and I... I didn't see him for four months then, and he came home in July, and now I haven't seen him for two months. So he's been here for for a week, and I won't see him till his birthday at the end of next month, and then it'll be Christmas. But obviously, it all depends on what happens with lockdown. And I'm like thinking, is this the last time I see him this year? Will lockdown stop him travelling back home? Because he's not a student student in the sense that students can work from home. He's he's a PhD student. He has to be there. He hasn't got a lab at home. Of course. He has to do what he needs to do to get through his PhD. So... So I'm kind of up ahead to thinking, is this the last time I'm going to see him this year? Because we, none of us know how the pandemic will will change. You know, will it get better? Will it get worse? Once the students get back to university from all over the country, from all over the world, you know, going into Nottingham um, and other universities, you know, what 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 is what's the what's going to change as a result of that? You know, how will the pandemic spread? Will it will, will they be able to contain it? So I'm kind of very nervous about him going. Well, listen, uh, we wish I'd, you I'd more than happily have him to stay at home. But, yeah. Um, well, listen, we wish you all the best, Alison, as well, you, and to your family. Thank and thanks very much for taking those stories for us today. And we wish. Alison, and anyone who's going back to university, if you've got a kid or a grandkid who's maybe going back or just saying goodbye to them this weekend, we say hello to all of you and wish you well. Bye.